So, uh, hi everyone. Uh, this is Aditya Shekhar, your host for the show today, and we are uh, in yet another interesting session of Ignite. Uh, this show is basically about uh, motivating you, or rather, showing you what kind of career avenues you have after you have done your law. And today we are being joined by two amazing law professionals. One is working with Cyril Amarjan Mangaldas. She is an associate and uh, she has done a law from UPS Dehradun. She is a 2016 pass out. And uh, her name, uh, of course, is Soumya Sahai. And uh, we have another very interesting law professional known as uh, Raghav Joshi. He has done his law again from UPS Dehradun. He is a batch 2015 uh, pass out and is currently uh, working uh, with uh, a PSU uh, as a, a, a legal uh, counsel there. So welcome both of you to our show. Uh, hope you're doing well. Yeah, thank you. And hi, Raghav, sir. Good to catch up after a long time. Right. Uh, so uh, Raghav and Soumya, I, uh, one by one, I would uh, like to understand, uh, first of all, how uh, how did you decide that UPS Dehradun is the college for you to go ahead and study your five-year law course? Uh, Soumya, if you can take uh, us to your decision wherein you basically choose UPS Dehradun as your college. So, uh, so I applied, definitely applied to a lot of colleges, but one edge that the college had over other colleges and it still has that is that it provides specialization in energy laws. So at that point of time, that was one attraction for me to choose UPES over some other colleges. And then, of course, when I went to Dehradun, I love the city. I love the campus. We have a beautiful, amazing, sprawling campus. But that was secondary. It was majorly because of the energy law specialization that the college provides. Yeah, and if I'm not wrong, it is not being given by any other college in India. No, that's just UPES. Okay. Okay. What was uh, what was your decision? What was your uh, uh, take uh, on this, Raghav, uh, while applying to UPS Dehradun? Uh, like Soumya said, I during my uh, class or uh, just after my class twelve, that is in two thousand ten, right. I applied to various law colleges and also for engineering exams, also entrances, and uh, out of uh, uh, Mainly, my focus was on CLAT and UPS only. Just as Somya said, that uh, whatever talks, uh, there was very limited internet out back there at that time. So, whatever, uh, whenever somebody talked about UPS, they talked about uh, specialization in energy laws. That was something out of the blue. And as a layman with very less knowledge of law or what I'm going to study at that time, uh, I got excited uh, by the thought of studying. Uh, a different subjects, oil and gas laws, apart from the regular law subjects which are prescribed by Bar Council of India. So that was the, one of the main attractions I joined here. Secondly, uh, uh, even after I joined UPS, I got called from some uh, low tier NLUs also, but I preferred UPS. Rather, my parents uh, preferred UPS because the campus is quite safe and away from the uh, cities, big uh, metro cities, and situated in a green uh, environment, which is good for health. And parents are also at peace of mind, uh, thinking that children are at a safer, uh, comparatively safer place, apart from being uh, as compared from being in metro cities like Mumbai or Delhi or Bangalore, for that matter. Right. right. So I would like to uh, yes, this is our show... campus, beautiful campus here. Right, right, right. So I'd like to show uh, to the students a few photographs which uh, uh, both the uh, law professionals have shared with us. Uh, this is uh, the campus, guys. So you can imagine, and you can see on the background these nice uh, hills which you have, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it must be reminiscent, uh, you know, for you guys. The memories yeah. are something which is some you know something which is unparalleled, and uh, the college itself or oh, is it slightly far from the main city there, Adu? Yeah, yeah, it's eleven kilometers away from the main city, and it's in the middle of jungles with uh, mountains all around. Right, it's just right, beautiful. Right. All right, all right. So uh, 
one thing is for sure that when it comes to choosing a, you know a law college for that matter and especially if i'm talking practically a lot of people are confused when it comes to joining a uh, you know lower uh, ranked uh, nlu for that matter so uh, if i'm looking at uh, uh, an nlu which is ranked at so 19 20 21 22 22 they might be slightly skeptical to join it uh if i were to compare some of these lower ranked nlus and ups uh what do you think somya uh, you would choose and why would you choose uh, you know that specific college see here i have a very uh, different standpoint and my standpoint is that there are no tier 1 tier 2 colleges there are tier 1 and tier 2 students <laughs> Right, right so whatever you college you choose every so they're teaching the same subjects uh they're hosting the same events they're holding the same competitions yeah there may be i i do agree that there may be 10% difference you know when you go to the market a lot of people would prefer an nlu student over a ups student so that prejudice in their mind is there Right. but you know if you are able to prove yourself if you've done well academically as well as you've done well in your extra curricular and co curricular activities i don't think colleges matter a lot after a point they just stop mattering altogether right so the prejudice clearly is not in the industry it is clearly somewhat more predominant in the minds of students uh, i i would say uh, it is uh, very minimal if uh, it if, is if, yeah. yeah it yeah. is minimal the first entering stage you will have to put in some extra effort but after right. that it becomes very very easy right and now the, as part of law firms i'm seeing that even that prejudice has you could say it's just very very minimalistic now right 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 so this is your uh, classroom if i am not yeah. mistaken so yeah. amazing uh, uh, classroom there uh, the infrastructure of ups is quite uh, uh, good for that matter and spe- especially talking about the university it gives uh, a lot of options to the students as well and that's why uh, uh, you know uh, accommodating a large number of people is not a problem when it comes to ups uh, take us to the general life when it comes to your college so how did uh, your uh, college life used to be uh, raghav sir if you can answer that yeah uh, for the first year uh, during my five year program for the first year i stayed in the, the campus hostel and that itself was a very exciting experience because uh, living close to or rather within the campus itself uh, was a big privilege able to boys only at that time that is way back in 2010 and uh, the hostel was very good and the facilities were there like a uh, first class facilities and there were three people living sharing in the, the same room and each one of us had a different corner so that we could uh, study sleep without disturbing the other roommates and this is one of the best things that very few uh, universities can offer at any given of point of time that you still offered at then my classes during my first year began at 8 am and they ended at around 130 pm in the afternoon just before lunch so for like 130 pm to 530 pm the library was open and i uh, and i and few of my friends we used to go and explore the various subjects that law as, as a law student we could study or learn from the various books the various authors the various journals the various for the first time if you are studying a judgment it's very exciting and the teachers uh, guided us like how to approach a judgment how to start reading it for a fresher it's very difficult to see humongous uh, pile of uh, pages like uh, 150 page judgment but how to approach it that taught by teachers in ups and i used to do that for like 2 to 3 hours per day and later in the evening the the campus was so beautiful and the surrounding areas were so beautiful that i used to go for a run with my friends or sometimes alone also and that is the uh, uh, and after that in the night also it became very cold and we used to go to play cricket match there is a big field in the main campus there is a basketball court also there right. and the 
facility suited for uh, playing cricket, uh, I think, and uh, football also in the night time. Right. And there is a gym in the hostel also. Right. And, right. Uh, for overall development, every facility is provided by UPS campus. Right. Uh, coming to Dehradun, Dehradun is uh, considered to be one of the best uh, cities in the entire country. Uh, Soumya, tell me how it changed your life or, uh, you know, uh, how did it matter to study in a place like Dehradun? Did it matter? Did it not? Uh, if it did, uh, how did Dehradun change your life? B because you, uh, uh, you know, uh, sort of uh, uh, invested or rather spent a very significant amount of time in Dehradun. Yeah. So how did it all uh, basically affect your life? So I'll tell you after uh, passing uh, class 12, when I had to go to college, I did not cry. I did not feel bad. But right. five years later, when I had to leave Dehradun, I cried for almost a month. <laughs> That's how I, 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 that's how much I was attached to that place. It's right. a beautiful place. It's a beautiful city. And it's a blend of both a tier one city and, uh, you know, it has peace, it has calmness and it has every facility that a tier one city will be able to provide you. So in, I would say Dehradun is a great place to stay. I, even today, I think of, uh, you know, opportunities which I could... Uh, used to go back to Dehradun and settle down there, but I cannot sadly because there are no law firms in Dehradun. Right, right. Uh, speaking of, uh, uh, you know, your transition into uh, jobs and internships, uh, one thing which is uh, haunting uh, each and every law student is to get or land a decent job. Yeah. Now, uh, tell us to our viewers uh, that how did you guys figure out uh, the internships or the opportunities which were available in your college? So, uh, did you have to do it on yourself? Is there a placement committee? How did you figure out that this is something which I want to explore? What was going on in your mind when you were applying in these uh, uh, firms or PSUs for that matter? So take us through your mindset when you were applying for internships in these firms. Somya, you can go ahead with your answer first. All right. So there is a placement cell in the university and uh, which did help me bag one internship. And I was very actively, I used to apply by myself also. So I think landing internships is, a, is the most difficult part in law schools. Uh, because, uh, again, uh, a lot of students from a lot of colleges will send their applications. It, become, it definitely becomes easier when it is through the campus uh, placement cell. So we, we did have an uh, active campus placement cell, but the, at that point of time, they used to help students only in the fourth and the final year. So I did bag internships from the university itself in my fourth year also, and in my fifth year also. And it, in fact, my first job was a pre-placement offer uh, to an internship that was, uh, that I got through the college placement cell. Okay. And otherwise, I have interned with Supreme Court lawyers and I interned with one of the leading law firms. But those I got by myself, I applied to those places. Right, right. Raghav sir, what do you think uh, is the importance of internship for that matter? When it comes to law school, since you have uh, done your law and it's been some time since you have graduated from your law school, uh, coming down the memory lane, watching your steps back, how do you think uh, interning uh, in a better manner or interning at better places or uh, changes one's uh, uh, career trajectory. I think that is a very, very pertinent question. The role and importance of uh, internship in a law student's life. See, uh, when, when we are investing five years in a law school and in, in a law college, five years of our life, then we expect that uh, after five years, we will get a job later on. And to uh, so, so as a law student, internship plays that role. Internship plays that connection between being a student and getting a job, getting hired. How does this happen? From the uh, first year onwards, rather from the uh, first semester itself, we must, as a student of law, we must realize that 
getting known, getting familiar with the various opportunities that uh, we can get in future as a job. These opportunities are as a lawyer, practicing under a lawyer, as a lawyer, working in a law firm, as a in-house counsel, working in a big corporate, working as a uh, in a bank, legal advisor as a in a bank, working or preparing for becoming a law teacher later on. These all uh, aspects can be explored during internship. So you student gets a flavor of various opportunities working uh, uh, as an intern in various organizations. Like yeah. I interned uh, in uh, thrice in as a uh, corporate that was in ONGC and the other was in Petroleum Natural Gas Regulatory Board. Uh, and I was associated with the in-house team. From there on, I realized that the being the in-house thing is more attractive to me. So my efforts should be directed to joining, uh, to figuring out and joining a company as an in-house legal person. And I entirely left uh, the aspect of joining a law firm, even though law firm is a much better, working in a law firm is a much better prospect. But I realized due to my internships that I want to join uh, as an in-house in a company. Secondly, once you start interning, once you, for the first uh, year, second year, you get at least two, four months to intern. So you can do four months of internship there in four different places. Those four places can be a blend of law firm, individual lawyer, in-house corporate, or in a bank. So there from these four months, you can figure out that what you want to do after getting your five years. Suppose you want to join as in a law firm. Then the rest of your internships from third year onwards, you will get at least uh, seven, eight months again as internships. So then from third year onwards, your efforts should be directed to finding internships in various law firms or trying to intern in a single firm again and again, again and again, uh, and showcasing your perseverance and your hard work and your dedication there. And this will enable the persons working in the law firm, particular law firm, to consider you, to look at you again and again, to evaluate you and to consider you, to give you a job in future, just after you pass. The, this aspect, Soumya can deliberate much better because she was given a pre-placement offer from one of the very big power sector transmission companies in India. Right. So that is the role of internships that you get to have a chance to showcase your capabilities, showcase your perseverance and your dedication and hard work uh, capability and get hired even before completing your uh, LLB degree. UPS has a committee. UPS has a uh, very big network across uh, various law firms, various in-house companies and LPOs and even uh, various uh, tier one law firms. Right. And Raghav, uh, just I got many of the internship uh, opportunities. Yes, Raghav, just to, just to cut you in between, I just wanted to understand one thing. When it comes to PSUs, uh, what is the process of their selection? What do they actually look in a candidate while selecting? I've heard that there are a lot of examinations as well. So there's, you know, there are a few PSUs which are taking candidates through CLAT PG examination. But then there are PSUs which give you uh, a previous right, right, right. Uh, you know, offer. So, uh, uh, what is, is there a set criteria or you will have to figure out, especially when it comes to the bigger PSUs like ONGC and, uh, 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 you know, let's say Bale or uh, all these uh, important PSUs to give the CLAT PG exam and then only, uh, you know, uh, sort of get uh, in them. So is there a, a set criteria or you will have to basically figure out uh, one PSU at a time? See, uh, th th this thing is very uh, random and keeps on changing. However, right. from 2014 till 2019, the pattern remained very quite stagnant. Right. That uh, PSUs like ONGC, Power Grid Corporation, THDC, BHEL, Oil Limited, they uh, utilize the marks of uh, CLAD postgraduate exam right. for shortlisting for interview. Right. However, uh, there are various other PSUs 
PSUs are divided into various categories like Maharatna, Navratna, and Mini Ratna. ONDC and BHL are all Maharatna minus and Navratna, and there are Mini Ratna also. So the Mini Ratna companies, PSUs, they take their own exams. They conduct their own exams. They right. come up with their vacancies and uh, candidate is supposed to take that exam, pass their, pass the interview and uh, or um, the GD process, and then they get selected. So every PSU will have an exam. Either it will be through CLAT, PG, or it will they will have an independent exam. Exams can be of a multiple choice questions also, and exams like BPCL takes uh, an extensive exam comprising of subjective questions from family law to CPC, CRPC, right. constitution, various law subjects are asked in BPCL entrance right. exam. Right. So, uh, approach should be keep an eye or use the internet thoroughly, list, uh, find out a list of uh, PSUs and keep following them again and again the recruitment section they okay. and uh, for utmost clarity uh, i would like to clarify that there is no replacement for uh, given in public sector companies nowadays right. it has been stopped so amya uh, things have been slightly different for you uh, so yeah. you took your transition uh, from college uh, going straight to amarchan mangal das if i'm not wrong no uh, i first uh, went to a corporate Okay. Uh, which is called Sterlite Power. It's actually actually a subsidiary of the larger Vedanta Group. It is into all power right. sector. All right, all right. So that's a very niche area in which you were working. Uh, so uh, take us through your decision of uh, joining a corporate. Now, uh, like, did you apply? Did you get a pre placement of offer? And while you were interning, what were the things which you did to get yourself noticed? Uh, uh, you know, in front yeah. of the uh, management to uh, sort of offer you a job. All right. So as uh, Raga sir said that while you intern, it, it becomes clear to you as to where you want to go. What sec uh, do you want to go to a law firm or do you want to litigate or do you want to go to a corporate? So even I decided that I, I, I used to see myself in a corporate as an in-house counsel. And uh, Sterlite is a power sector company. And because of our energy law specializations, Sterlite came to our campus when I was in the fifth year for offering internships. And it was a two month long internship. And uh, we were, uh, uh, me and a, a, a classmate of mine, we both got that internship and we were working directly under their legal head. And uh, see, when you are a fresh, as we were talking to law aspirants, I will tell you that when you are a fresher in any interview or in any um, uh, internship, all they want to see from you is one, that you should be a de dedicated and smart person. And the second thing that they look for is that your basics of law should be very, very clear. You should know what contract law is or what is uh, what are the basics under the companies that what is a company, how it is formed. So that's all that they expect from you. And that's, that's all I tried to showcase in my internship. And uh, I got lucky there and I did get a pre-placement offer. Then when I worked with Sterlight for almost uh, two years, I realized that if I you know, join a law firm and spend substantial amount of time there, and then maybe come back to a corporate, the kind of jump that it will give me, give my, the kind of jump or boost that will give to my career, will be amazing and great. So then I decided to shift to a law firm and I interviewed with several law firms, got lucky again and I got through Sirila Merchant. And now I've been working here for almost three years. Right. And how is your life now? So how do you see yourself working in a company like Sterilite and uh, Sterilite and then uh, working in a premier law firm which I mentioned is? How is the work hours? How are you balancing your work-life balance? How different do you think you are working from your previous organization? All right. So my life at Sterlite was just amazing. It was a dreamy, filmy life that I had. So I got to travel a lot. And I, I mean, I used to travel like twice every month. I used to stay in big hotels. And uh, then I used, uh, my meetings used to be with, you know, the, uh, the CFO and the CEO and the management committee of the company. And uh, and the working hours were fixed. It was from 10 to 6. At 6, you close your laptop, you go back home, even if the company is burning down, <laughs> you don't have to care about it. At Amachand, it's actually quite different. There are days when we work 
I mean till four a.m. or till six a.m. in the morning, and uh, getting leaves is also an, a different. It, it's a very difficult process. So law firms do give you more money than a corporate will, but then they, a lot of people leave law firms within six months or within a year because of the burnout that law firms give you in return. But I would say that the learning curve in a law firm is much, much, much greater than what it will be in an in-house role. Uh, not every place, but mostly. So uh, that's the difference. It I think it is for people to decide what decision, what are their priorities, and what do they want from life. Yeah, well, and uh, speaking about that decision, that is a huge decision which they are uh, supposed to take. Yeah. So, uh, what do you think should be the key uh, elements while taking this decision? So, Amir, if you can answer that, what do you think should a student think uh, before taking a job like you or Raga for that matter or uh, uh, any other uh, stream for that matter? So. There, are, there has to be some uh, benchmarking, there has to be some criteria Definitely. that the student has to choose. What do you think uh, should be those criteria? See, there are two things. One is how important it is for you to have personal time, to have a family life, to have, you know, to be able to go out with your friends every weekend. If having a personal life is extremely, extremely important for you, uh, <laughs> law firm might not be the best place. Second thing is, again, you have to prioritize your things. Like what is most important to you? Is learning most important to you? Is job security most important to you? Do you want a balanced life? You want sufficient amount of money and you want sufficient amount of time for, that you want to give to your family. I think these are the factors that you can count when you uh, are to decide whether you want to go to a law firm or a corporate or for that matter, if you want to litigate. So no, nobody else can dis decide for you. Nobody else can actually even recommend anything because that's purely a personal choice. And if you decide to come to a law firm, I'd suggest if you think that you can, you know, sit on a chair and work for 14 and 16 hours at a stretch, then only join a law firm. Otherwise, uh, it will become right. difficult. Right. Uh, speaking of your life, Raghav, what exactly, uh, you know, your day looks like? So what are the kind of work which you do? How uh, do you sort of spend your time uh, when it comes to your office? Uh, what are the things which you are supposed to uh, deliver on? What are your responsibilities? All of that. Uh, my company is a public sector government company. And uh, a lot of works uh, uh, done there are, uh, my company is a civil construction company. So there are a lot of uh, civil projects like uh, bridges, roads, uh, metros, redevelopment of uh, big marketplaces, development of rail is going on. It is being done by my company. So being a construction company, my company has an endless list of litigations going on in various high courts across India and most particularly in Delhi High Court. So there are a number of operations going on. Every day there is a one hearing or the other going on. So uh, my work begins at 8 a.m. in the morning. First thing I do is to check the cause lists of various high courts, most particularly Delhi High Court, and see if any new matter is listed uh, against my company. Being a, uh, being a government company, the, my company comes under the definition of state and is quite amenable to rid jurisdiction of various courts. So every now or the one day or the other, some random person is filing a red petition against my company, which has to be defended there and that, that very day itself. Right. So second thing, uh, I, I have to like, uh, come, uh, review the various contracts that my company is signing, that my company is going to sign uh, with uh, the contractors, with the clients, or with various technology partners. Every industry has very specific type of contracts. Uh, contract may have uh, various clauses which are common to nearly all uh, contracts. Contract for a medicine industry, whether it be for a FMCG industry, whether it be for a uh, telecom 
education industry and whether it be for a construction company. However, each industry has a very specific terms and conditions suited for that industry. So uh, I have to review all those terms and conditions. See how those terms and conditions are going to put my company at risk in future and how I can advise to mitigate that risk. How I can advise and check uh, check and advise that these uh, contracts or these clauses are not uh, as per the prevailing situation of law. Right. So that is the second uh, thing I have to do is to uh, advise my aspects of labor law that come up again and again. Right. The company right. engages various uh, so labor law knowledge is a must for me. And if there is a hearing coming up, I have to show a uh, conference between lawyer in the matter and my projecting the engineering team who will be the witness, who will have the knowledge of the, the case, ongoing case, uh, range of material, uh, and then advise how the lawyer should proceed on the upcoming hearing, what uh, possible uh, arguments the opposite party may come up. Then I have to participate uh, in the hearing with the lawyer, support him, provide him the required documents, ensure that everything the lawyer representing my company requires is there. Right. And then uh, preparing for any matter which is uh, which may come the next day, which is about to come up the next day. Right. Other thing is that I have to keep in touch with various law firms, the associates, the partners of various law firms, uh, evaluate uh, their performances and uh, build rapport with them try uh, uh, build repo so that I can get a good, decent amount of work done from them right. in a very uh, economic manner. So, uh, some may will be knowing about this, right. how this all is done. And how, so, how is the making connections, maintaining them, and uh, trying to uh, quite uh, to, since uh, two, three years, uh, for, for two years, I've been in uh, this uh, PSU private, pri previous to that, I was in Larson and Tobro, Mumbai. That right. was a um, private company. And as Swami said, the work time was like 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. So 5 p.m. you can leave the company whether it is burning or not. So the, that uh, work pressure was very less in private sector. Now right. I'm in government sector. Uh, the work pressure is tremendous and uh, we are answerable as a uh, legal, uh, legal personnel to the management of the company, to the business people, to the engineering people, to the research people, right. to the parliament and as well as directly to the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas. Right. So right. work pressure is tremendous now and the scope of uh, personal life quite diminishing. And straight away after office, I am sitting here with you. It's no more uh, eight to five job for public right. sector employees now right. nowadays. Thank you so much for that wonderful insight, uh, guys. Uh, we would like to answer a few questions of yours. So please feel free to write questions on the chat box. We'll be taking one question at a time. So request you guys to uh, start shooting us your questions. In the meanwhile, one final question which I would like uh, Soumya to answer here is. Uh, so when we were giving our law entrances, uh, this was back in 2010 uh, and uh, I'm sure Raghav must be uh, just like me preparing for the common law admission test. I still remember me uh, giving the examination with 25 to 30,000 students, right? Yeah. Uh, and law was gaining traction uh, at that time. Uh, yeah. There were very few right. lawyers uh, and uh, the scope was also slightly fresh. Right. Everybody was really interested in what exactly this thing is, which is law. Uh, do you think there is a sort of stagnation when it comes to the number of seats which common law admission test has increased? The number of people who are coming to take law has now increased from 25, 30,000 who were giving the common law admission test to now, which is 65, 70,000. Yeah. So do you think uh, there is a sort of saturation when it comes to the inflow of law uh, graduates uh, when it comes to the various avenues uh, which uh, uh, India has to offer? Or uh, do you think uh, law is something which will adapt to the number of people who are uh, coming and joining as uh, law professionals? See, to start with, I think every profession, be 
comes to this point where this saturation or this stagnancy comes like if you see 20 years back engineering was that profession everybody want ask anybody and they were preparing for iit je exams right. and then the shift it kind of shifted to everybody wanting to do an mba and now that same thing is happening with law and eventually you know the colleges the system adapts to it and uh, I think some uh, a few uh, national or universities have been increased, and then there are a lot of private colleges that have come up. Uh, I will give you a personal example. When I took an admission in my college, it I was the fourth batch, right. and now my college is the law college is almost like ten years old, right. so they have a good number of their uh, alumni in the industry. Right. So, uh. So every college also, you know, grows and understands and uh, builds a reputation for itself in the market slowly and eventually. Like Symbiosis is a private college, but has a fantastic reputation in the market. And that is majorly because there is a huge alumni of that college, which is there in the legal industry, every spread across every, uh, uh, be it a uh, uh, in-house, be it in-house roles, be it a law firm, be it litigation or anywhere else. So the industry will eventually adapt to it. There'll be more colleges. So stagnancy, see India is 120 billion population. So a little yeah. problem, a little stagnancy and saturation has to be there, but right. the industry adapts to it. Right, right. So let's uh, take a few questions and uh, we would like us to be a little succinct. Can you take us uh, to the salaries? Ultimately, everything boils down to money. So can you take us uh, to the salaries of PSUs? Uh, so Raghav, can you take uh, tell the ballpark range, if not the exact figures, which a uh, law professional after graduating from uh, law university will get in a PSU? See, if you get an opportunity to join uh, a PSU just after graduation, that from point of view of salary, it is an excellent choice. Uh, the your first pay. Uh, in all PSUs will be more than uh, 1 lakh per month. And you will get an excellent uh, amount of uh, perks and benefits, unlimited medical coverage for you and your family. And so and as you let the promotions will be fixed, time bound, nobody will be able to take away your promotion. You will have an excellent uh, job security. You, uh, nobody will throw you out of the company. And uh, if you want to work and if you want to learn, you will get a good amount of uh, opportunity for that also. Growth in a PSU is uh, unlimited. Basically, once you are into a PSU, you are in the government sector, you are within the domain of a particular ministry. Then the opportunities are many from there. You can uh, uh, join, uh, you can travel to various ministries on deputation, work in there. You can work in the South Block, North Block of the Parliament on deputation, be there for like uh, three, four months. You get to meet uh, all the dignitaries in the government infrastructure. Moving from one PSU to another is also easy. And each and every time, uh, you will get a, a good amount of jump. The uh, right. one thing that uh, the PSU people employees uh, get uh, is their uh, DNS allowance, which is like linked to the inflation. So whenever petrol price prices increase, you get a hike in your uh, salary also. Then petrol prices are always increasing. Right. So basic case, uh, you will get anything uh, more than one lakh per month right. at the lowest joining range. Right. Right. As the what most about, junior person. Right. What about uh, you, Soumya? Where do you think the law firms are supposed to pay since money is the uh, main consideration when it comes to people juggling yeah. with their uh, professional life and completely extricating their personal life? Mm -hmm. So uh, how is the money there and uh, what is the ballpark? See, law firms are different categories of law firms. There are tier one law firms, there are tier two law firms, there are tier three law firms, and then there are small law firms. Right. And the pay scale across different law firms are different. So uh, we, uh, when we talk about packages, we often uh, you know, only focus on the tier one law firms. Uh, they will offer you a starting package of, say, somewhere between 15 to 20 lakhs. And the, increment, the yearly increment is also excellent. Right. But uh, the bonus pay is huge. But these are just the top, there are just seven to eight top tier law firms in the country. Right. If you go to, 
the tier two law firms they also pay you decently, but the smaller law firms uh, uh, there may be a problem in terms right. of package there. Right, right, right. All right. Uh, let's take a few more questions. Parth has a very uh, uh, peculiar question. He says, "I want to pursue my career as <clears throat> military jack, judge advocate general, and will it help me coming back in corporate sector?" So, why would you want to join the judge advocate general and coming back to corporate sector is something which you'll have to think. Uh, if you really want to pursue a career in jack, uh, it is See, an career, just like uh, uh, you know, working in a PSU or for that matter, working in a, a corporate firm. It's just that you'll have to focus on the examination, which uh, the jack, uh, which you know, a normal. Uh, uh, this thing happens. I think there is a uh, short listing criteria which they have, and then there's SSB this, there. Yeah, SSB uh, basically, and then they uh, conference uh, 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 you out or conference you in, and then accordingly you are giving the given the postings. It's just a short service commission uh, uh, posting. So after 12, 15 years, you will be asked whether you want to continue, and depending upon your performance, you will be uh, kept or uh, sort of uh, asked to. Uh, uh, sort of super annuate, uh, but then uh, it's uh, again a very uh, different and a very amazing career for that matter, right? Uh, let's look at some other questions. Uh, yes, Saranj, please take my question also. Just a second, Saranj. So there's one question that I've seen like at least ten times, and I'm sorry I'm interrupting you. Is is uh, LLM necessary to take up a corporate career? No, it is not. It has been asked so many times that I felt I should just answer it. Right, right. LLM is only necessary if you want to, you know, go for, go become an assistant professor or a professor. Right. Academia, right. Yeah. Another question which is uh, targeted to you only. Uh, this is, my question is to Soumya ma'am, that is the life is so stressful even for senior associates, partners, etc. Or the pressure is mainly on associates. So is it spread uh, like consistently? Or it is... starts right from the managing partner of the firm and it flows downwards. All right. So partners are relatively uh, stress-free, it seems. No, no, no. I'm saying it, the pressure. Uh, I am sorry if I, if you, if I was not clear enough. Everybody is under equal stress, equal amount of stress. In fact, as an associate, you uh, you are under less pressure than a senior associate or a PA or a partner. Partner has to complete his targets, bring clients, and do a lot of things. So right. everybody faces that pressure.